Well, Ken, thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants will be in listen-only mode until the question and answer session. To ask at that time, please press star 1. The friends is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now turn on the call over to Shannon McGarry. You may begin. Great. Thank you very much, and welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today's webinar, Getting the Most from Your AmeriCorps Healthcare Coverage, um, is beginning now, and my name is Shannon McGarry, and I will be your host for today. Uh, this web shop is really part of a series of monthly web shops that have been designed to provide you with tips and assistance that will help you to navigate your VISTA service year and to form the work that you've been assigned by your organization. Notice that on your screen, if you uh, look to the right-hand side of your computer screen, that there's a poll there. Um, that poll uh, is, uh, asks, asks you a couple of questions, and we'd love for you to fill those out um, so that we can know who is participating in today's webinar and be able to direct you to your needs. Okay. Great. Sorry about that. Uh, joining us today uh, is Jory Kamosi, who is the account manager uh, with Seven Corners, and Shab is our technical uh, assistant who is a project specialist with Campaign Consultation. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Sharon, who's going to walk us through some tips for using WebEx. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. If you use your internet connection, Please go back to your email and reconnect using the link that was emailed to you. And if you lose your phone connection, you will need to read the phone number to rejoin. And say your voice is muted now, but we will open the line later for questions. Please the chat section to the right, and we'll answer those questions as they occur for the most part. And for the first part of our question, the first part of the webinar, we would like you to uh, limit your questions to the topic at hand. And we will later open it to everyone, although I'm sorry, I believe it is open to everyone now, so we can see all of your questions. Great. Thank you so much, Sharon. And now I'm going to introduce Andy King, who is the VISTA Training Specialist. And he's going to provide us with a few words about professional development. Andy? Shannon, and welcome, everyone. Um, as I said, my name is Andy King, and I work in the VISTA Training Unit and feel very privileged to have the opportunity to develop learning opportunities for you to improve your VISTA service and perhaps your professional development that uh, may serve you beyond your VISTA year. Um, I work on developing uh, courses like this one, as well as sessions at the pre-service orientation, and then to build the content that's on the VISTA campus. So we welcome your input uh, for all of those things and, and would love to hear from you what other kinds of, of learning that you'd like to do. I want to thank you for making time to join us today um, and for investing in your professional development with the VISTA year only as one of uh, where you're continuously developing the capacity for the community, but that you're also using this year to build your own capacity, to build your own skills, and uh, really to use it as a, a key professional development opportunity. And sessions like this one are one way that you can do that, and there certainly are lots of others. We uh, always point you to the VISTA campus as a, as a resource. We have many other great trainings available in communities across the country, and so I encourage you to take a look at those as well um, for other professional development opportunities. So you've made time in your busy schedule to join us today, and now I'm going to turn you back over to Shannon um, to get us started on the presentation. Great. Thanks so much, Andy. Uh, before we get started, uh, I noticed that the poll closed a little bit early, but we were able to capture some results, and uh, Sharon is going to share those with us. Certainly. Uh, so for the number of people in the first question, how have you utilized their AmeriCorps health care benefits? 115 of you answered that you had not, 71 had. Uh, about do you have other health care benefits? Uh, 74 of you said that you did, and 110 did not. And question relating to if you already have a doctor, and is that doctor in the AmeriCorps health plan? Uh, six of you said yes. Well, 
100 and said no. And you will find low-cost health care that is not covered by your AmeriCorps benefits. 187 of you said no, no, you don't. And 34 of you will you with that somewhat later today. Great. Thank you so much, Sharon. Uh, those were really insightful um, questions. So thanks, everybody, for taking the time to answer those. You may have noticed that the chat is open to everyone, so if at any point in time you have a question that you would like answered regarding, uh, related to your AmeriCorps healthcare benefits, feel free to ask those um, in the chat or Q&A um, feature on the panel on the right, uh, and we will pause to answer uh, some of those questions later in the presentation. Uh, so, um, Today's agenda, uh, we're going to be going over uh, seven corners and your AmeriCorps health benefits, so we'll be providing you with an overview of that, uh, review some of the eligibility uh, requirements with the uh, limitations and exceptions. Uh, this includes going over some of your co-pays and pre-certification requirements. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about medical and pharmacy networks uh, and some of the coordination of benefits. Uh, in addition to submitting claims and subrogation so that you're aware of what, what some of the processes are with that. Uh, also, we'll let you know how to contact customer service um, and to convert uh, over once you have finished your AmeriCorps year. Uh, and then finally, we'll talk a little bit about some of the uh, uh, sources of benefits um, that will help you to uh, find care for some of the uh, areas that maybe aren't covered under your AmeriCorps health benefits. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, turn it over to Jory Kamosi, who uh, is the account manager from Seven Corners. Jory, I believe you are now going to have, have rights. Thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jory Kamosi, and I'm the account manager for the AmeriCorps health benefit here at Seven Corners. In, uh, to be in the Miracle Health Benefit Account Manager. Sorry, we're going to the next slide here. Also, the backup account manager for Peace, the Peace Corps Health Benefit, as well as the U.S. Department of State AFB Health Benefit. What I'm going to discuss today is your Miracle Health Benefit. So, without further delay, let's get started. Your AmeriCorps health benefit is a limited benefit plan. This is not an insurance policy. It's not a major medical health benefit coverage. Insurance are also not covered under this plan. The plan was self-funded and written by the Corporation for National and Community Service. This plan is administered by Seven Corners Incorporated. Seven Corners is a privately held company, not owned by any large insurance company. We have owners that come in every single day, walk around, interact with us, so kind of a close-knit company. Seveners, as the administrator, applies the benefits the way they were written by the Corporation for National and Community Service. Since it's not an insurance policy, it's government money, Seven Corners has no financial gain when denying a claim for payment. Administrator for the AmeriCorps Health Plan, our responsibilities include processing claims for payment, customer service, benefits and claims, eligibility or enrollment of all members, prescription drug coverage, and the development of an internet self-service option called My Plan. Plan is a component of the website where your secure information is located. It is password protected, and where you can view your claims, interact with customer service, print a new virtual ID card, the online explanation of benefits. We also recently, I believe, were looking at installing a chat area into my plan. The most current information about the AmeriCorps Health Benefit is on the website, as you see here. You can find everything you need, such as forms, frequent ask questions, any updates would be posted on the main page. There's also a glossary of terms. There's a link to my plan. There's a link to the medical provider network. 
You can get information about the pharmacy network, and it also contains our contact information. Activation, you will receive or already have been given an ID card. You must keep this ID card with, all, with you at all times. The card provides 24-7 coverage and has your ID number on it. You must present this to a physician, hospital, or emergency room. This call also has our contact information, pre certification requirements, pharmacy information, and also has network logos on the card. Our um, virtual ID card is available in the McLean website if it's lost, or you can contact Seven Corners so we can send you an additional card. All contact information must be updated in the Mayor portal, the My AmeriCorps portal. And what I mean by contact information, that means if you have an address change or any other personal information change, you must do that in the AmeriCorps portal. Once it's updated with AmeriCorps, your updates are sent to us via a daily data file. There are some benefit limitations to this plan. Since it's not insurance, it's a limited health benefit, there is a lifetime pre-existing clause. Pre-existing conditions are not covered. A pre-existing condition is any condition or illness for which medical treatment was given or diagnosis was made on or before the effective date of the AmeriCorps Health Plan. This includes if you consulted a physician prior to your effective date or received treatment or medication prior to the effective date. Causing you to take a look at a few of the questions. Other health benefits are not covered under this plan. They include dental care, all routine dental care, routine eye exams, glasses, or contacts, routine examinations. If you have questions about immunizations or vaccinations, please contact Seven Corners so we can advise you which ones would be covered. There are um, a few exceptions to these limitations, which I'll discuss next, but I want to address at this point that I just listed a whole bunch of things that are not covered, and later in the presentation, Andy's going to be discussing some resources that can help with these limitations on vision, dental, and mental health. So what are the exceptions to the limitations? There is a dental exception. Treatment for the alleviation, the emergency alleviation of pain is covered. This must be documented by the dentist on the claim or on attached office notes. There is also a vision exception. If glasses or contacts are damaged in the line of duty, you can re be reimbursed five, up to $25 for the examination and up to $50 for repair or replacement of the glasses or contacts. You pay out of pocket for the vision exception. Um, that must be submitted on a claim form then to Seven Corners along with a letter from your supervisor. There's so a routine care exception. When you have one GYN visit per service year, which includes a pap test and a breast examination, I do like to warn that routine lab work is not covered and can address any specific questions you have about that later, but what that means is if your doctor decides to do a routine cholesterol screening and other routine lab work when you're not having any issues, that, that's considered routine and not covered. Passive management is covered. There used to be a restriction on this, however, the Corporation for National Community Service opened up contraceptive management to be covered for all members. You have coverage for one mammogram per service year if you're 40 years of age. And for women over 65 years of age, you have coverage for one bone mineral density test. Men, you also have an exception to the routine care. You have coverage for one 
one prostate exam per service year if you're over 50 years of age, and this also includes the PSA test. At pause, there's a question about what specifically is contraceptive management. Contraceptive management is if you go to a physician specifically to discuss or to get a prescription for contraception, you would go to the physician and ask for a prescription for birth control pills. If you go and um, get an IUD, if you would go and get a depo shot, or more plant or any of the covered contraception. Um, and if you any other questions specific that we could address those later, but hopefully I touched on, on most of those. Um, age for the bone density test, I see that's a, a question again. That was for women over 65 years of age. And I also to see a question about uh, what should the letter from the supervisor say, and I think that's going back to the vision care coverage. If your glasses or contacts are damaged in the line of duty, if the letter just basically needs to say that what what program is, what you were doing, and verify that that it was in the line of duty. Um, another question. Was have about a GYN appointment um, where a blood test was ordered because there's a history of anemia. Um, it's one of those that it's, it's considered routine if there's a history of, or it can also be considered pre-existing if you are diagnosed with anemia. So if you wanted to discuss maybe some of the particulars of that by calling here, we, we would be happy to talk to you and, and be there some other details that goes along with it that we can discuss. I'm um, going to move on, and if there's any other questions, I'll try and answer them as we go, but maybe we should try and hold a lot of them for later. So if I don't answer your question, it doesn't mean that I'm not addressing it. I'm just going to try and keep the presentation moving. As far as coverage for mental health coverage, for uh, you have three outpatient mental health visits per year that are not subject to the pre-existing limitation. If you have additional mental health visits that are subject to the pre-existing limitation. So that means if you have a pre-existing mental health issue, you get three visits, no matter what, but those are covered for you and not subject to the pre-existing limitation. If it's not a pre-existing limitation, there's not a limit to these that, however, it needs to be documented on file here by request of information from your physician that it's not a pre-existing condition. Core covers inpatient hospital services only for conditions that are not pre-existing. This is required to pay a $5 copay. For emergency room visits, members have a $25 copay. If a member is admitted to the hospital, the emergency room copay is waived. You must pre certify an inpatient hospitalization by calling Seven Corners. The pre certification must be done at least one business day prior to a planned hospitalization or in two business days after being hospitalized for an emergency admission. This is not a guarantee of payment. It's a way to certify medical necessity. A third nurse or case manager um, manage your hospital stay to ensure you receive the correct length of stay. We don't want you to be discharged early based on your medical condition, nor do we want you to be in the hospital longer than is medically necessary. And I want to add here that, that there is a 21-day inpatient maximum on hospitalization. Medical network. AMER uses the Choice Care Provider Network in all states except for New York and New Jersey. What you need to say to the provider is, are you in the Choice Care Network? For New York and New Jersey, you would use the PHCS slash multi-plan provider network. And again, what you would need to ask the provider is, are you in the PHCS network? If you contact the provider and tell 
tell them that you have AmeriCorps health benefits, Corners health benefits, Corporation National Community Service health benefits. They do not recognize those. What they recognize is the provider networks. Logos for Choice Care and PHCS MultiPlan are on the card. You're also encouraged to use a provider network not only to save the program money, but also to protect yourself from out-of-pocket expenses. Visit a non-network provider. You are responsible for the amount above the usual and customary rate. So what is the usual and customary rate? Well, that is determined by other providers charged in the area based on the zip code. So an example is if you go to a provider that's not in network and he charges $500, but every other provider in the area charges $100, that $400 difference is the, above the usual and customary rate. I, there is an earlier question about Puerto Rico. Um, and what's happened with Puerto Rico is Choice Care, PHCS, MultiPlan, Beach Street, all of the major networks that there are out there have all pulled out of Puerto Rico. So what we're going to do to get a network for the Puerto Rico members is um, we've been in contact with the state office, and they're going to get together a list of the major um, providers or provider um, in Puerto Rico, and we're going to contact them directly and start a contract so that there's a, a unique provider network just for the Puerto Rico members. This is a pharmacy network. Um, you don't need to be as worried about staying in, an, in a pharmacy network provider because every pr uh, pharmacy in the United States is in the network. AmeriCorps benefits include prescription medication that are not subject to the pre-existing clause. There's a um, list of excluded drugs that's on page 9 of the benefit guide. Medications are covered. There's only this list of excluded categories. So if you have specific questions about a medication to know whether it's covered or not, um, we can answer a few of those on the call, but it's, if it's something I'm not familiar with or don't know off the top of my head, we'll have to look that up and maybe contact you later, or you can contact Seven Corners. There's um, no copay for generic medications. There's a $5 copay for brand medications that have a generic equivalent, and a zero copay for brand medications without a generic equivalent. You obtain a 30-day supply at a retail pharmacy and a 90-day supply through mail order. Amer is secondary to all other insurance. Medicare is only going to be primary to Medicare, Medicaid, and other select government programs. In dual benefits, please remember that you must submit both cards to a medical provider. Also, please be clear when you explain which one is primary and which one is secondary. If you're unsure if your insurance is primary or secondary, please contact customer service at Seven Corners for assistance. If you have primary insurance, please be advised that we cannot make a payment on a claim until we receive your explanation of benefits from your primary insurance. Sometimes this is for by the provider, but ultimately, you need to, to watch your claims to make sure because it's not always done and we might need that explanation of benefits from you. Mayor has the right to subrogation of claims. So what this means is if you're injured or become ill through the act or omission of another person in receive a settlement, Mayor must be paid back for claims paid on your behalf. If you gain an attorney, you must notify Seven Corners so we can work with your attorney and advise how many claims you have, the amount billed, and the amount paid. If it's not done, your settlement could end up less than your actual bills. We've had this happen before, and it also happened when members have tried to settle with another insurance company without notifying us of the accident. The, an example that I like like to give here, we had a, a member that was hit on his bike and took 
a $2 settlement when his bills were actually, I think, close to $5,000. He thought that he had a very small bill from the ER, which was only one of his bills. He thought he was going to have enough to pay for his bike and have some cash left over, but that wasn't the case because his bills way exceeded this, the settlement that he signed for. So please contact us so that we can help you and let you know any bills that are out there. Of course, AmeriCorps is not responsible for the member's attorney's fees or other costs. Claims for injuries cannot be paid until the injury accident details request form is returned to seven corners. The form is issued when we see any sort of injury diagnosis code on a claim. This doesn't necessarily mean that this is a subrogation case. It's a way for us to document subrogation cases as well as have information on file about your injury. So to give you an example, if you twist your ankle, you'll get an injury form. If you break your leg, you're going to get an injury form. If you burn yourself, you'll also get an injury form. The so rule of thumb is any time you injure yourself, you can even, even go online and get this form and fill it out and send it in ahead of time instead of waiting until the claims are processed. If for some reason you pay out of pocket, there is a claim form located in the back of the online guide. The easiest way to find it is in the forms section on the website. Please remember to submit all receipts with the claim form. And I have to add here that um, if you pay out of pocket, it doesn't always necessarily mean you're going to reimburse because these claims are subject to the benefits in the pre-existing clause. And I know with um, the, the spend that you guys receive, we really try and not have you fill or pay out of pocket if possible. If there's a problem with a provider, please let us know about it because we would prefer that they submit a claim instead of you paying for something up front. And also then um, doesn't allow the corporation use the, the benefits that are out there. If you contact customer service, you can contact Seven Corners Customer Service 24 hours a day, seven days a week. By calling the toll-free number on, on the screen, this number is also on your card. It's on the website, and, if you, and it's also in my plan. We only be um, Monday through Friday, but it's actually 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can also email americor at sevencorners.com and help you find a doctor or hospital if you're having um, some problems with that. We can answer questions about your benefits or medical bills, and we can direct you to needed forms. There's also the same number to contact for hospitalization pre-certification. Also be the number you would call if you have questions about dental pain coverage. Okay. Upon termination from service, the Corporation for National Community Service has paid for the guaranteed issue of a policy through Celtic Life Insurance Company. Your option to convert to this policy must be exercised within 30 days of the date of termination from service. You are responsible for meeting this deadline because no reminder will be sent. You receive information by calling the toll-free number 100-365-2365. This is the number for Celtic. The premiums are set by Celtic, not by seven and corners. We have affiliation other than they've been a partner that was chosen by Seven Corners and the Corporation for National Community Service to offer this policy to you. Please, COBRA coverage is not available through the Corporation for National Community Service. And I also wanted to stress again that 30-day deadline. We just had someone that was at 45 days. We asked Celtic if they would please take the application, and they refused it. So they are very strict with the 30-day 30 um, 30-day window. Last but not least, the most up-to-date benefit guide is online. It's on the website at americorps.sevencorners.com. 
additional hard copies are available upon request. As benefit content, it is correct. And the pharmacy information as far as the actual company listed in the on guide is incorrect. And in the middle of doing a bunch of changes, so at some point you might see a, a brand new rolled out healthcare guide. Well, um, in the process and very close to rolling out a new website. So what you see today might not be what you see in a few weeks. So we're really excited about that. I wanted to thank you for your time today. I look forward to answering your questions in a few minutes. And I'm going to turn it over to Shannon. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Jory. Uh, Danny, we're going to uh, go ahead and open up the line for questions. Thank you. If you have a question, please press star 1. You may wait your question by pressing star 2. Once again, ask your question, press star 1. Be sure to record your name so I may introduce your question. One moment, please. Great. And just uh, in case you don't know if there, anybody has a question about a personal medical situation that you don't wish to share, uh, you can dial the number that's on the screen, which is 666-699-4186. Uh, while we're waiting for questions to come in, uh, Jory, there were a bunch of questions that were being asked in the chat feature. Uh, so I, I can um, ask a few of those now. That would be great. Great. So uh, questions was, uh, if you extend your service year, do health benefits start over, or do they continue to cover you during the extended time? If it's a back-to-back -back term, meaning that there's no um, lapse, no lapse days in between, then it's seamless. And actually, your benefits would start over um, to your bit. So, if you uh, use an example of the limit of three mental health visits per year, you get those per service year. So, you would get three during your first service year, and then as soon as you started a new your new service year, you would get three more. If there is a lapse in coverage, you're not covered during that time. So if you would be at the end of June and not come back into AmeriCorps until September, you're not covered between and coming back in into service. There's also um, some information. There's a clause in the member health care guide that says if you turn to service within 180 days after serving, Anything that was deemed not pre-existing is still not pre-existing. If you're at more than 180 days, if you come back into service maybe two years later or even six months later, if it was not pre-existing during the first term, it's now pre-existing during the second term. Hey, this is Andy. Uh, we sometimes have cases where um, a VISTA member will extend there's this term by a month or two. Um, and so in cases like that, does the clock start over? If they've exhausted, say, their three mental health visits, do they get another one? Or could a woman another OBG visit? Or is it only when they sign on for a second full-year term? I believe it's for a second full-year term. Um, but maybe, Andy, we could look in that a little bit further. That doesn't come up that often. And I think maybe in five years, I'm, I may be member someone asking that five years ago, so okay. um, I, I believe that it's for a full service year, but I, I would like to check into that just to make sure that I'm not quoting that wrong. Great. This is Shane. Uh, we're, we're getting a lot of questions uh, about specific medical issues and um, whether those things are covered. What would be your advice to, to the attendees about how to uh, find answers to those questions? If about specific diagnosis and, and conditions, if they're confused about coverage, I would suggest that they call. You know, they can always review the, the online guide, and maybe that will answer their question. Or if they're confused or have a question, please always contact Seven Corners, and, and we can try and answer your question. Again, if it's, if it's pre-existing, it, you know, if, if you know that you've already been treated for this in the past, or had vacation or visited a physician for it, then it, it'll be considered pre-existing and not covered. If it's something new, it'll be covered. We would just need to make sure we have all the right documentation here in order to cover it. Okay. 
Uh, we just got a question in that said they asked to explain again about this not being insurance and how to um, for the for the participant if they go to the doctor. What is, how do they explain what this is to them? Um, they explain that they're a, a volunteer and a part of their service is is this benefit through the government and that um, the work used is Choice Care Network or in the other two states, New York and Jersey, PHS. I can be really confusing because, you know, you volunteer for AmeriCorps, VISTA, but yet you have a diff, you know, a medical network, but the claims come to seven corners. Most of the time, if you explain to them, you know, you're, you're an AmeriCorps VISTA, this is your health benefit, this is a network, and on the back of the card it, it says submit claims to, most of the time, if it's explained in that order, they'll understand. Uh, once in a while, you're going to get someone at the front desk that just completely does not understand what you're talking about. Most billing offices do. Um, sometimes we have to in intervene um, and call a provider's office and, and talk them through it because it's not it's something maybe they're just used to dealing with the big mean insurance companies where insurance is just insurance. So if I come into a case where they're listed as being a network and they say that they're not, let us know. If they're saying that they're not going to accept this, and again, they're listed in network and not understanding what it is, please let us know and we'll be happy to contact the provider. Great. Uh, were there any questions on the line? Uh, yes. Our first question comes from Gwen Hodder. Your line is open. Yes, um, I had called Seven Corners because I was trying to find out about the uh, prescription drug plan that you mail in, and I'd like to get some information on that to see if there's a form out there that I take to my doctor or how do I get my medication um, through the mail on that 90-day supply. There is a, on, in the form section on the website, There, it's called a benefit script direct mail order form, and that's the, the form that you would need. And these forms are also available in, in a Spanish version online as well. Uh, it, um, you need to fill out that form and obtain the prescriptions from your provider. So make sure that he fills out for, I don't know, if it depends on the medication, how long they'll, how many refills they'll allow. Um, there's also some state regulations. but. If he'll fill it out for the full year, again, that's up to him. That's great. But make sure that he'll allow a dispense of a day supply at a time. We have had some issues where the provider will say on their only dispense 30 days at a time. They can do that just that it, it, they allow you to get the full 90. So just make sure that they fill out the prescriptions to dispense at least 90 at a time, 90 days at a time. Um, I want to caution also that there is some different state restrictions on controlled substances, so not all medications can be dispensed and shipped in day supplies, but it depends on the state and the medication. So Beniscript is, is very good at, at knowing the rules. So if you have a question about mail order, they're probably the best one to contact, and that Beniscript number is also on the back of your card. If you have a question about whether a medication is covered or not, you can always contact Seven Corners or you can contact Fenniscript. All right. I uh, say that on uh, page nine in the handbook, is that mm -hmm. where it tells us that the prescriptions uh, that are not covered? Um, <clears throat> there's stories of not covered drugs such as um, fertility, Treatments, erectile dysfunction. Um, there are a, a couple of categories of of drugs that are not, are definitely excluded. Mo I would say for the most part, most medications are. So if you have a question, you could either review that or you could give us a call and, and we can verify for you whether they're covered or not. You can always email us. Question: Would you know the turnaround of when they get the prescriptions of, about how long it, it takes, uh, you know, for you to receive it, or I need to call them to ask them. 
I probably call them, but I thought that we had asked for a very quick turnaround um, but because not only do we administer benefits for for the AmeriCorps Health Benefit, but also for peace in the U.S. Department of State. So we required them to, to turn it around pretty quickly. Um, if, if they're not, then I would need to be aware of that. Um, I don't know what's fair, I would say, a week or less, but it's also going to depend on how how they get that prescription, if you're mailing it in, if you're faxing it in. So I, I don't want to hold them to any specific time frame, but we've asked for those to be done as quickly as possible and to be expedited once they see that it says seven corners on the top. And the mail order form actually does say seven corners in big black letters across the top because of that. We um, don't use just the standard Benescript form. We've added a few things to, to tailor it to our, our program. Thanks. I think we have time for one more uh, question in the, um, on the phone. So, Danny, is there anybody else waiting on the line? Our next question comes from Rebecca Stewart. Hi. Hi. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, I went to the doctor on day. I went to the Seven Corners site for a preferred provider and mm -hmm. just picked the first one that was closest to me. Um, they, I did the filer copay and everything, but now looking through that, I'm just wondering if I should be worried that that's not covered. It was my understanding that everyone on that list, the preferred provider, was in that work. So I'm just wondering um, if I should be worried that it's not covered. Um. I think we just need to be careful that we don't mix up the preferred provider network and the covered benefits because they're two different things. We want to make sure that you, you stay in the provider network so that you wouldn't have any at the charges, you know, out-of-pocket charges above usual and customary. But every visit is always subject to benefits the way they were written. So, yes, it's good that you went to a, a network provider but um, without knowing exactly what you went for, if it was just a general it was just a cold. You know, just cold, then it, yeah. then it should be fine. Okay. Um, it's all based on what's on the claim. So if for some reason something happens with that, let us know. I mean, I, I've seen um, go for a cold, but because they have pre-existing asthma, the, the provider puts asthma on the claim. Well, then let us know about that because we only can go by what's on the claim. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Great, thanks. Uh, and so um, I continue to ask your questions in the chat feature, and we will open up the lines uh, again. But I do want to give uh, Andy King a moment to talk about some tips for finding coverage for those situations that are not covered by your AmeriCorps healthcare coverage. So, Ann? Great. Thanks, Shannon. Um, and there's been such a lively discussion. I do want to quickly point out a few suggestions um, that might help you to find source of low-cost uh, health-related services. Uh, before I do, I want to just offer this disclaimer. Um, by my mentioning something here is not a recommendation or an endorsement for any of these, and I would strongly encourage you to make your own assessment of the suitability for any of these programs or services your own needs before making a decision about whether to pursue them. So, um, so that's the thing I want to say. The second is, um, as a resource, um, of course, you should all look at um, to one as a, um, a resource in your area for getting referral to uh, resources and services in your area um, that uh, may have sliding scale or low cost or, or have particular benefits for uh, people with a low income. Um, but I want to take a look at a couple of uh, specific areas of uh, health-related services um, where there's very limited or no coverage in the AmeriCorps Fit Plan and, and give you some tips uh, that you can use. I do believe that all of the things I'm about to mention here um, are described a little bit more fully in a handout that's going to be emailed to you after the session, including links to all of them. So you can go to the website and read about eligibility and find out what services are provided and if they're in your area and how to access them and all of that. So I won't go into those details, but I just kind of wanted to give you a top-level view of some of the things that are out there. 
Um, in terms of vision care, uh, there are many groups and organizations that provide free uh, eye exams and free eye glasses. Hubs are a great place to start. They're in thousands of communities around the country and the world. One that the Lions Club can do is they can recommend you for uh, receiving free or low-cost um, eyewear or, or vision exam through one of the other providers. Lions Clubs don't provide these services themselves, but they can assess your situation and make a determination that says, yes, you qualify. Uh, and they'll write a letter on your behalf or they'll uh, refer you to one, one of these other programs. Uh, the biggest programs is called One Sight. It used to be called Give the Gift of Sight. Um, it's uh, sponsored by the Lens Crafter Foundation. They offer uh, free exams and free eyeglasses to people who qualify. Um, and basically, uh, those are people who are selected by local nonprofits and charities based on their visual need and financial need. Um, so go to their website and find out the eligibility criteria and find out uh, their partners. They have a related program called the One Day Program. Uh, coming up soon, um, the second Tuesday of December, and it's a partnership between Lens Crafters, Pearl Vision, uh, Target, stores, uh, Sears Optical, a couple of other providers, um, open their stores early on this day, and they provide free exams and glasses. Uh, there's one called VT Mobiles that uses actually a mobile um, clinic, like an eye clinic and lab uh, that's a uh, trailer that they pull around the country. Their website has a schedule of where they're going to be and when, so you can look at the calendar. Um, uh, VSA is a similar program that has uh, pop-up clinics that they schedule. Um, and then last one here, New Eyes for the Needy, has been around since the 1930s. Um, and Helen Keller was a, a big proponent of it. They don't offer exams, but they do provide glasses. So if you have a prescription um, or can exam somewhere else, um, that's op an option as well. Uh, more resources for vision care. Uh, there are low-cost options. Um, uh, and Sharon, if you can go to the next slide, there are cost options as well. So there are a number of um, programs, one's called, or companies, one called America's Best, where they have a package deal. You can get um, an exam and a couple pairs of glasses for something like $70. Um, if there's a, an optometry school in your area, um, they use students to provide exams, and, and it's all supervised by licensed optometrists, so you're getting quality care, but uh, very low cost or, or free for those kinds of exams. The major tailors often have um, specialists, so Sears Optical and Costco and JC and a few others are examples there. Um, there are online coupons uh, through like Groupon and uh, Living Social. There's one as well called uh, Coastal.com that focuses on eyeglasses. Other online retailers uh, like Zenny Optical and Direct um, are good places to get glasses for as little as $7. Now, dental care, because um, we've seen a lot of questions come up about dental care. Uh, finding absolutely free dental services is difficult, um, but uh, certainly low cost dental services are, are widely available. Couple of, if there's a dental college near you, that's a great place uh, to get full spectrum uh, coverage, particularly if you have a, um, a complicated uh, case. Um, dental hygiene schools are more widely available. They're in community colleges all over the country. Um, and then there's a collection of organizations called federally funded community health centers. These are um, there are thousands of them around the country. They're, they're nonprofit community organizations. They receive federal funding, and so they provide services to low-income individuals um, on a sliding scale or at very low cost um, at a set, a set pricing schedule. Them, not all of them, but many of them offer dental care as part of their suite of services. Uh, so again, the resource that you'll receive has a link to their directory and just look by a state and city to find out what's available in your area. You can search by dental care or the type of care that you're looking for. And likewise, there is a whole um, coalition of free dental clinics 
Um, and, uh, and there's a, an online directory for those as well. Med, uh, medical care, there are some kinds of root services or, or other services that may not be covered or may exhaust the benefit that we provide through the AmeriCorps Health Plan. Um, you can look at this directory of federally funded community health centers. Um, there also are community free clinics, and there's an online directory of those where you could get free services um, for things that, uh, that again, are, are beyond what your coverage is. Most public hospitals um, have associated with them an outpatient clinic that offers uh, free services um, as many city and county health departments. And a couple of you asked about uh, flu vaccine. Um, your city county health department is very likely to offer free uh, vaccinations, um, so I would definitely look uh, to see what's available in your county. Community free clinics do that as well. Well, if you are a service veteran, you would apply for free and discounted services through the VA medical system. I just want to touch on mental health care options. It's going to sound very similar to what we've just talked about. Um, there are uh, there's a class of, of organizations, uh, mostly nonprofit, around the country, known as community mental health service providers. There's a national directory of those, and they provide uh, free and uh, slide-scale uh, counseling services and other mental health uh, uh, covered mental health services. Uh, many of the federally funded community health centers also have mental health services as part of their uh, suite of services. So you can search that directory um, and look specifically for the mental health providers. Uh, and again, some of the free, uh, the community free clinics offer mental health services as well. So that was a really quick look. Um, uh, as I said, you'll be getting a handout, links to these directories and to, to some examples um, so that you can see what uh, what some of these services are. And, um, you know, if it's not covered, then you have to end up paying out of pocket and go look for the best deal because there are lots and lots of sources of low-cost care out there. So I'll bring you back over to Shannon, and uh, I think we may have time for a few more questions. Thank you so much, Andy. Um, Danny, can we go ahead and open up the lines for questions? Thank you. Once again, ask a question, please press star 1. Great. In the meantime, uh, there have been quite a few questions coming in um, about doctors that are listed in the provider network uh, and not being able to find people that are uh, in the location that Avista is serving. So uh, what would you recommend that Avista do when they're serving in an area that doesn't have a uh, doctor in their provider network? Uh, there's a few things that I was seeing on here about that. First, I wanted to, to clarify again, just because you go to a provider that's in network does not mean it's covered. The provider network for coverage is basically to make sure there's a contract and that, that you know, the corporation can get a good rate and you don't have to pay out of pocket, that is completely separate than the covered benefits. So because you go to a, a network provider, it doesn't mean that it's covered. So please all, always refer to the online guide for the benefits um, or co contact Seven Corners with your questions. As far as um, being able to find a network provider, um, that if you're not able to find one in the search that's within 35 miles of your location, the benefit guide states that you're allowed to go out of network, but that's only if there's not a network provider within 35 miles. If that's the case, please contact us because we will make a note in there. We'll, we'll do a search with you. We'll make a note then that there was, was not a provider that was within your area, and then you can go out of network. This does not happen very often. So, I mean, I've had people in a, a major metropolitan area call me and say they couldn't find a provider network, but provider. But when I look up what they wanted, which, which was general practitioners, I found 300. So, it, if you come across someone that says it's not in the network, but they're listed as being a network, please let us know because sometimes it's it's an education thing with the the provider office. Maybe Maybe whoever's at the front desk doesn't understand, or they might not even be aware of whatever contracts were signed by someone else 
somewhere in the organization. So the person taking the phone call doesn't always know exactly what works they're in. They should, but they don't always know because, like I said, it could have been someone at a higher level that made an agreement and signed up for the network. If someone, if, if that information is inaccurate, also please let us know because we have passed that along to the network. They try and keep provider lookup data as clean as possible and as up to date as possible, but sometimes providers move phone numbers and don't tell the network. So they do follow up, but it's, it's also up to the provider so the networks know when there's been a change in their information. So please let us know that as well. Great. Thanks so much, Jory. I'm going to continue to take questions, but I also want to draw your attention to uh, the evaluation that's been opened on the lower, uh, on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, before you log off today, if you could just, uh, or in the next, actually, in the next five minutes, if you could go ahead and fill out that evaluation. It really helps to inform uh, our webinars in the future. Um, so great. Uh, are there any other questions that are on the phone, Danny? Yeah, we have a question from Roxanne. Your line is open. Hi. Um, I have a quick question about physical therapy. If you are injured, not necessarily on the job, um, and need to seek physical therapy to recover, um, is that covered? And if so, for how long? Um, again, as long as it's not a pre existing condition, it, um, you mentioned it was an injury. Mm -hmm. So we would just need to have that injury for mention. Um, here uh, in the office at Seven Corners. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the job injury or what I say in service injury. Um, if it, the PT would be covered, we would just need to have a, a valid prescription from a physician. So it would be whatever he prescribes, let's say he says three times a week for five weeks, then that's what you would be covered for. Um, if you would require additional physical therapy after that prescription runs out, we would just need, then need a, a new prescription on file. And then always find a, a network physical therapist. So or, um, before any of that can happen, we have to file an injury claim? Um, we would just need the form. I mean, you could you could already start going to the physical therapist. It's just that before we could pay any of the claims, we would need that injury form on file. So you don't have to worry about that it's stopping you from going for services. It's just that before we can issue a payment, we would need the form. And that would be provided by the, the physical therapist, and they could just send that to you. And that form is either available online, or if we would receive a claim for this injury and we don't have that on, on the form file yet, and the, the, uh, the explanation of benefit notification that goes out to let you know that a claim has been processed and you need to view it in my plan. Um, it, the form would be attached to that explanation of benefits for that specific claim. So it's always really important to check any of the explanation of benefits in your my plan account to, to see if additional information is needed from you. And at that point, we would ask for that form if we don't have it. Thank you. Also, are food shops covered? Food shops are covered. Um, um, we encourage members to maybe try some of the, the flu clinics, um, maybe like the CVS, Walgreens, and some of the other clinics because they, they're a more economical approach than going for a full um, office visit and flu shot. We would hope that if you do go to a provider that they would only just be charging you for the flu shot because it doesn't need to be an MD to administer that. It can be a nurse practitioner or several other qualified providers in that office. So you have a, a few options. You can either find a provider and get a provider or you can take advantage of some of the clinics. And some of those clinics will actually even submit to your health benefits. If you have your card, they require you to pay cash, you know, $15. And if that's the case, you can just submit that on a claim form with a receipt for reimbursement. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Great, uh, and we have another question in the chat feature. Um, this one is about how, uh, a question about what the time limit is for filing a claim. Uh, I know that there is one, and I saw that question. I was looking through the guide, and that tells you how often we enforce it. <laughs> we really don't enforce it much. I want to say that 
that it's, it's two years something, a year or two years. But really, um, it, and fourth, we try and help members in any that we can. And one of them is, is expect, ex- taking those claims a few years old. Um, it certainly makes it way more difficult when we have someone try and submit a claim six years later because you can't always get the information that you need to pay it. So I would say to, to try and stick within that one to two year um, frame and that way everything's available for the payment of the claim. Sometimes we've had issues where we just didn't get the claim right away if there was other insurance companies involved or someone moved and didn't you know, realize that there was a bill out there. So we try and give get more of um, a lap. You know, leeway with that. Um, I see that there was a question about acupuncture. Acupuncture and chiropractic is not covered under the AmeriCorps Health Benefit. It's in the exclusion section, unfortunately. Great, thank you. Uh, and wh- there are a lot of questions, and I will try to get to as many of them as possible. Um, uh-huh. But again, I want to remind people that uh, you can call the one eight six six. Six nine four one eight six. Um, with any questions about your uh, personal medical situations, or uh, any questions that you might have about what may or may not be covered. Um, were there any other questions that were on the phone? Yes, um, we have a question from Kim Barian. Your line is open. Hello, how are you today? Been good. Y'all are answering some wonderful questions. I want to say thank y'all. Y'all did a wonderful job. I got three quick. You already answered one of them about the alternative therapies. I had some surgery um, back in July, and I've gotten some information from the lab companies. And when I called, these were pre-screenings for a surgery. And I said that these are my co-pays because they weren't covered by insurance. Should I ask these resubmit with y'all? Now, we should take a look at those. Um, was this a, a covered surgery, meaning was this, a, this yes, covered under the benefits? It was totally okay. covered, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, there could be a couple things going on. Um, for less, you don't have a copay. So, um, and this brings up a really good point that everybody needs to know. Sometimes when we make the payment and we've taken that network discount for the agreement that they have, sometimes the provider will continue to charge you for the amount they were supposed to write off the bill, meaning they have an agreement, a contract that states this is how much they paid, that's how much we pay them, but then they continue to charge the member when they shouldn't. So I suggest that we look back at those labs um, to make sure, one, that there's not maybe something missing. Maybe they used a couple different diagnosis codes on different lines and it wasn't clear to the analyst, so we needed additional information. Um, Or it could be that they're trying to charge you for the network discount. Okay. So we should take a look at those. And labs, um, we get a really, really good rate for the corporation on labs. So that's one that continually I'll see them charge the member when it shouldn't. Okay. Uh, and my final question was, was I had a mammogram in August. Uh, it was it appeared to be clear. And then I developed a discharge. And I, they, I went to MD Anderson Cancer Center, and they did a second mammogram. Uh, will the second mammogram be covered? Uh, yes, and, the, and as long as it's not a pre-existing condition. Sorry, I haven't. I have to keep saying that, um, but I I always am no, told no, to no. make that clear. But no, that's um, definitely clear. It wasn't pre-existing. Okay. The first mammogram came out clear. I developed the discharge. The second mammogram mm-hmm. came back with two masses in it. So. Oh, th- yeah. Then unfortunately, that, that's co- um, you know I'm sorry that that happened to you, but yes, it w- it would be covered because that was considered diagnostic. So. We would just need um, maybe clear that up if they've denied it, like as a second one. I don't know if they've processed it or not, but we might just need to get some office notes for doctor um, saying well, that. Well, if there's any question about it, I will definitely refer my doctor back to y'all or what have you. Okay. I just want to make sure because I just noticed that it said you get one mammogram a year, and I got to thinking, well, mm-hmm. technically I've had two, so I just yeah, want to but sure. that's yeah. under the root coverage part of it, but if, if there's a an issue like you were having um, indefinite symptoms that warranted one, then then that turns it into a diagnostic thing. Well, thank you for y'all's information and doing this, right. and thank y'all for being so good with it. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Uh, we have time for one or two more questions. Danny, do you uh, have anybody else that's waiting on the line? Yeah, no. Next question comes from Spring Kavanaugh. 
my question was, if we have existing insurance, um, but the copay is higher for prescription medications, is it acceptable to use the seven corners um, to get our prescriptions for free? Yes. And um, there is no not real good way for pharmacies to coordinate benefits. So if we're talking about a medical claim, you would have to use both of them and, of course, through your primary medical insurance and then, then your MiraCorp benefit coverage. But as far as pharmacy, it's really up to, to you whether which one you pick to use because you don't have a, an efficient way of, of coordinating benefits on pharmacy. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, and uh, there have been a couple of questions uh, regarding pregnancy uh, and whether or not if somebody gets pregnant during their service year? Mm -hmm. um, if, if they're pregnant before coming into the service, then it's considered pre existing. If they become pregnant while they're in uh, AmeriCorps, just like any other condition, we would just need to have that request for information form from the provider. And that's something that you guys may never see. We send those out to providers routinely asking them for information. They send it back, and then we can go ahead and process a claim. So that that would help us establish that it wasn't pre-existing. Um, the delivery of the child is only covered if you're still active as, a, as an AmeriCorps volunteer. This, the coverage does not continue after service. Um, like with any of these benefits, they continue on your last day of service. Um, so the covered maternity services um, on page two of the health care guide. So if you have any questions, hopefully that can help you the rest of those. The, the baby one in the hospital with birth has has some very limited coverage as far as the hospital stay, and then a few diagnostic a diagnostic tests. Those I'm not exactly familiar with, so for that question, please contact us and, and we can look that up for you. Uh, great. Uh, I think we'll take one more question on the phone, and then uh, we will wrap things up. Danny, is there anybody else on the line? Yeah. Yes, our next question comes from Emily Bachman. Your line is open. You answered my question. We were just I, I we were just wondering if the secondary insurance would cover the running costs of copays and things like that for services that were um were under the seven corners plan. So I think we're pretty well covered with that one, unless you have anything further you wanted to say about that. You're meaning the prescription coverage, right? Right. Or well, I mean, I, I'm thinking more specifically for, like, if the pay is $5 for um, the seven corners, but I have insurance that, say, is $30 for the pay, am I going to pay the $30, or will seven corners um, down to five, like, cover the remaining, so it's down to five? Does that make sense? Um, we we would cover the remaining as long as it's a, a covered benefit under this plan. So it would have to be submitted to your primary insurance. And as soon as we receive the claim and the explanation of benefits from your primary insurance, showing, like you said, thirty dollars left, um, then we would pay the we would pay twenty five and leave that five dollar copay. So um, that's you know in, in the case of an office visit. And some members also, if you have really high deductible plans um, or or high coinsurance or copays, that it's also the the same thing. So as long as we have an explanation of benefits on file with the claim and it's a covered benefit under the plan, then we we pay we normally would at, and pick up after your other insurance left off. Okay, and can I ask, um, if I did not register my primary insurance up to this point, because I wasn't sure what to do with that, um, there was something that isn't covered by Seven Corners, can I go through and reprocess it with my primary insurance, or am I just going to have to cover the cost of that? Um, you should submit your primary insurance, and... Um, if that hasn't let us know about it, it, it you know, it be for a couple of reasons. Maybe you didn't fill out the form and send it back or respond to the email where we've requested that a few times. Um, some people just don't want to let us know about it. There's a whole bunch of reasons. Eventually, it comes around because different providers might put it on a claim and we'll see it. And we've had to go back and ask providers for money back. So... If, if it's happened to you, please let us know, and we'll work with the providers and have them submit the claims to your primary, 
insurance before we start asking them for refunds because then they're not going to get paid from then you'll have a, then you'll have no payment on the book so we don't want that so yes if you had something that wasn't covered by us please submit it to your primary insurance and really should let us know what your primary insurance is and call your providers and have them start submitting to your primary before we before we start asking for refunds because then it's going to get really messy and we don't want that to happen to you Did there all of your questions with that? Yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to just respect everybody's time, and, and so uh, thanks, everyone, for participating today. Uh, I want to remind everybody that if you do have a question that wasn't answered during our uh, chat, uh, that you can go one eight six six nine nine four one eight six. Uh, to have that question answered. Um, and then you can also, uh, if you have any questions about anything else that's uh, VISTA service related, you can add those uh, by sending an email to VISTA Campus at campaignconsultation.com. Uh, I also want to encourage people to participate in some of our upcoming uh, webinars, uh, such as Social Media Monday, uh, which will be happening on Monday, October 29th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we'll be talking about Twitter uh, microblogging at its best. Uh, and then we will also uh, have another uh, webinar for VISTAs on writing winning grant proposals that's scheduled to take place on Wednesday, November 14th at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So be check out the calendar on the VISTA campus for a complete schedule of VISTA webinars. Uh, I want to thank uh, Jory and Andy for their insightful conversation today, uh, and we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Have a great afternoon. Bye.